Good evening. Welcome to Chicago Founder Stories here at 1871, Chicago's new digital startup hub. We are uh, going into our finishing our first year here. We have one more month left before we finish our first year, and we have an exciting uh, group tonight. As always, um, pizza and beer in the back on us. Uh, we will have, uh, for those who can't make it tonight, we will have this on video. And you can see any of the past videos of Chicago Founder Stories on coolerbythelake.com. Uh, but we have a, a great pair today, uh, a pair I've known for a little bit and uh, excited. We have the founders of Starter League. Mike, Neil, welcome. It's all glad to have you guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so this is an interesting one. It's that we've, we often, our stories have uh, gone further in how far they are. Last week we did Siri, last month we did Siri, and it was interesting to hear a story that, of course, we all now know, but a company he sold a couple years ago and is moving on to his next thing. You guys are right in the throes of building this thing, doing a lot of exciting things. Um, so for our crowd here, tell us a little bit. How would you describe what Starter League does? Oh, you got it. All right. Uh, so uh, the Star League originally, I mean, it came out of this problem that we wanted to solve for ourselves. Um, we, you know, Mike and I, and we'll get into this later, we, you know, took a year to teach ourselves how to code and design some web applications. And we had a lot of challenges on the way there. So ultimately, we realized that there should have been a place that he and I could have gone to to learn these skills. And when we looked, we couldn't find it. So uh, we decided to build it. And what it is is it's a school that teaches people how to code and design web apps. But it does it instead of in one year plus, in three months, it gets people to the point where they have the confidence that they could ship something. So we teach user experience design, visual design, web development with Ruby on Rails, HTML, CSS, but ultimately at the end of the day, how to ship. That's great. Now, you're not the first people to want to code and not mm -hmm. find a way to do it. So talk about how you got the idea of actually turning it into a business how you got the idea of setting it up the way, because there are different people who've attacked this problem in other parts of the world a little yeah. differently. How did you guys, tell us, about the, tell us about the story of how you founded it and how you came up with the concept the way it started. Sure. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so that year was pivotal for us. That was, uh, what was that, 20, 2010 to 2011? Yeah. yeah. Um, May, to April, May of 2010 to April of 2011, we basically just day in, day out, read every book, every tutorial, every online resource, every offline resource, every uh, hardcover book, every hackathon, every meetup, everything you could imagine to pick up these skills. And we were relentless about it. We knew how to work. We hustled. And we worked part time just to make ends meet. We ate ramen noodles, bread, and cheese just to you know, get by because we wanted to learn how to code. And we weren't making a lot of money. And we had these ideas for, these, uh, for software that we wanted to build. And Basically, it got to this point where everything came to a head on a number of factors. But really what we realized is that like when we looked at the graduate computer science programs, we looked at all the different uh, ways that we could go about getting a more formal education in order to do this. Um, they either didn't really fit our budget because we didn't have a lot of money, or um, they weren't teaching the things that we were teaching ourselves or wanted to learn, um, which were very tangible, practical. Uh, technologies that companies and startups are using. So, All right, so, so let's yeah. walk us through it real tangibly. So you're, you guys are reading, studying, you're doing all mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, you're saying to yourselves, this should exist, right? The classic entrepreneur yes. Yes. moment where you're like, why isn't somebody already doing this? Because I'd do it. I'd yep. participate. I'd buy. Um, but at what point did that turn into looking and longing and working hard, hustling to do it, yeah. into starting to say, hey, we should, we should work on this idea? Yeah, I mean, well, Quickly, I mean, we spent, you know, a good six to eight months, like, just uh, building our own ideas. Uh -huh. um, and then it got to a point where uh, in the spring of 2011, we just heard from, like, different sources, you know, of the problems. You know, we you know, had a, a breakfast at Golden Olympic, uh, and, you know, one of the, like, from the Northwestern perspective, it was, oh, we have all these really talented college graduates, you know, coming oh, these out. These are both... Yeah. Uh, Talented Northwestern uh, alum. You can see they're purple right there. <laughs> we were with Brad yeah. Moorhead. Yeah, Brad Moorhead. Brad Moorhead. And, uh, so he's a Northwestern yeah, alum as well. Yeah, and he mentioned the fact that, you know, oh, we have all these really talented college graduates coming out, but they're not, they're st not staying in Chicago. They're going to the coast, um, and we want to keep them here. Uh, then we had our own personal experience of wanting to learn how to code and design uh, and build web applications, but we weren't at the level yet. And then there were people in Chicago coming up with all these amazing ideas, but no one had the talent to build them. And so we kept hearing all these things. And so it just, we decided to, instead of building our own web applications, let's build a school for other people to build their web applications. So that's kind and of how we it get turned. to build ours, too. Yeah, and then we get to build ours. The <laughs> so, but plan. but so, so the idea of building it as a model where yeah. you create
create a school. Like, that's no small undertaking. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just building an app and putting it out there and seeing yeah. who, who finds you. So how did you figure this out? How did you decide, you know, this is the model we want to build? What made it the right model for you? There, yeah, there was, no, there was no example of what we wanted. Yeah. I, I looked. I did all the due diligence. That's what I did before, you know, working in venture and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we kept it real simple. We had a whiteboard. Uh, it was actually a shower wall. It was a piece of shower wall from Home Depot. It was like, you can get it for like $11. And uh, so we, we just taped that on the wall. And basically, we just listed out the things that you need in order to have a school, or at least in our head, our idea of what a school could be. It was it's really simple. So you need a teacher. You need a classroom. You need a curriculum. You need students. You'll probably need a website. You'll need computers. Um, oh, yeah, money. So those things. And we just listed them out, and we said, all right, which one can we start with? So we, we kind of started with two. We started with the website, and we uh, tried to get an instructor. So those are the two things we, we started with. And you know, obviously, this whole time, Mike and I are meeting with people and meeting with people and like just selling the idea to the Chicago community and getting a feel for you know, uh, whether there was real demand for this and whether if we put a site up and we said we could do this, whether people would actually sign up and do it. And, uh, you know, we got real lucky to find out that that was the case, but it didn't come after, it was like four or five months of really hard work to get the school off the ground before yeah. we could even make it happen. And in terms of how we started, I mean, we can, you know, kind of tell them about, you know, talking to our friends. I yeah. Mean, we kind of yeah. decided, like, how much would, you know, you pay uh, for a program like this? So basically, we just, you know, we all gathered a group of, like, five to six friends, and we just emailed them, like, hey, would you want to do this? Would, how much would you pay? You know, and, and the range was you know between five to ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, and so that's when we kind of decided, just kind of pick the number uh, to start with. Well, it's a little more than that too, because that uh, honestly, those people we asked, yeah, they none of them signed up for the class. So <laughs> that was so cool. Um, really, what uh, the other part that influenced our, you know, what we set it at was based on what we needed. Mm -hmm. So we we knew who we were gonna like, who was gonna teach. We didn't know where we were going to teach it, but we had a reasonable guess for the square footage and what rent would be and that kind of stuff. And we knew how much hardware could cost, and we knew how much we needed to stay you know, afloat. And I just modeled that out. It was a simple one-page Excel spreadsheet with you know, expenses and revenue. And we were just like, how much do we need to charge in order to make sure this isn't you know, negative? And that was how we set the price. That's it. And so you get ready to launch. You've got your bottle. I was one of the people, I, I was one of your many networking mm -hmm. stops. Uh, I, I only met Mike recently, but Neil's one of the great networkers because yeah. I saw him when he was in Stool, when he was out of school. Yeah, we met at the Chicago Club. And, yeah, yeah, it's great. And, uh, you know, I always have excited and passionate, and, you know, people love, love that. And, of course, Northwestern people love to help other Northwestern people. Definitely. But, um, and I remember saying, I need JavaScript people. And you right. were like, we're not there yet, but I'll sign up as soon as you have it. But you guys are out there, you get this demand. So talk about the idea of, of, of getting it off the ground. Because, uh, so you have this idea, you've mm -hmm. got the model, you've got the plan. <laughs> so what happens? Yeah, so that, it was the summer. The summer was such a pivotal time. So we were doing a lot of weird things. You know, we, we were originally a nonprofit. There's an interesting kind of tale as to how we yeah. evolved into an LLC. Um, there's also the, the fact that we were working really hard to try to get some initial funding, believe it or not, because I had, like, the investment background, having worked at a few firms in Chicago, and I thought that, you know, we needed some resources because we didn't know whether people were actually going to sign up for the class. And then uh, there was the website we had to build uh, and launch. And there was um, a lot of work to find the instructor and bring on mentors and just build this community around this concept, as well as find a space. Um, and, you know, we didn't, we didn't uh, when we launched the site, I remember when we launched the site, uh, we had no idea what to expect. We didn't know what was going to happen. We just put a site out there. We had told a lot of people about it. We emailed people about it. We tweeted, Facebook, what have you. And, you know, two weeks later, we had, I don't know, over 50 applications or so. Yeah. Um, but even, ended, but yeah. even before, like, so there was, in that summer, from, like, we came up with the idea, actually, like, March, around March 22nd to yeah. March 28th is when we, the week that we formed this idea. Um, but even before August, when we kind of officially launched, uh, there were a lot of stops kind of in the way there. Um, one kind of key uh, was when we launched our landing page in June of 2011, right. we actually didn't have an instructor. Uh, <laughs> so didn't. when it was still, you know, Accelerate Labs, now Techstar Chicago, we went, we launched the site, and we went to their, like, launch day for the summer program in 2011, and some of our advisors had tweeted out uh, our landing page. 
Uh, and we were kind of like scared about that. We're like, oh wait, we weren't ready to like launch yet. Um, but luckily, uh, after a couple retweets, we got a tweet from a guy named Jeff Cohen, uh, who's also a Northwestern grad. Um, and he like uh, sent us a DM and he sent us an email and he's like, hey, my name is Jeff Cohen. Uh, I've been a programmer for 15, 20 years. I've been teaching on the side with my own company for five to seven years. I would love to help out in any way, potentially teach. And we had spent like a month, a good month, like <laughs> yeah, trying to look for fell in, It fell into our laps. Like, so who's, going to, who's going to quit their, like, who has enough skill to teach beginners in three months how to code? But then after that, who's going to quit their job? And then after that, who's going to take a pay cut? We had no clue yeah, we what money. we were going to do. And then our instructor found us. And so after that, you know, Neil had a couple meetings. No, well, we had a couple meetings, but yeah. the interesting thing there that people don't know is that Jeff, we didn't convince Jeff to quit his job. Yeah. He was just going to, like, part-time it a little yeah. bit because we, the model was, oh, let's convince 12 people to sign up for a class. That was, yeah. We wanted 12 people to sign up for a class, and we are like, we'll do one class, and we'll do it in, like, the afternoons on a couple days a week. Turns out we got way more yeah. demand than we could have ever imagined, and we ended up doing two classes, and then I convinced Jeff to quit his job. So, uh, yeah, so th things just so how kind many of, people when you first signed up? So we started with 35 students. Yeah. We had 88 applications, yep. I think. And we interviewed 45 people. And after those, we interviewed 45 people in four days. Wow. It was yeah. ridiculous. We took a break I, off. For, we took uh, one day off for Accelerate yeah. Demo Day yeah. in the middle. But Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday of a week, we interviewed 45 people. And that was the most epic week of my life. It was crazy to look at these people across the table, yeah. people like Vince sitting here in the front row, now, you know, he works for us now, but it was just amazing to look across and see these stories, these people that were quitting their jobs, yeah. that wanted to change, that shared our stories, that it went through even tougher times than we did, yeah. and they, they got it, and they were ready to take the plunge and do something amazing. So, I don't know, I consider those people our, our first investors. Those are the people yeah. that really took a bet on us, as much, just as much, if not more, than we took on them to make this happen, and they're the ones that we have to thank for, you know, what we have now. We'll, we'll come back to that, because I think yeah. they were your actual first people to give you money. They were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, 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 actually, no, they weren't, because Google Checkout held that money for two weeks, yeah. and I didn't know <laughs> that they were going to do that, yeah. so that sucked. So we, that's, why we, that's why we switched from a nonprofit to a for-profit. So we were a nonprofit, and <laughs> we needed this money to put a down payment on a sublease for 10 cubicles at Groupon, and then... We didn't have the money to do that or to get the hardware we needed for the machines that we had promised our students we would have. Yeah. We won $10,000 in cash at Spark Chicago. It was a startup competition uh, during Tech Week for working on a web app idea that Mike and I wanted to build online. We won ten grand for that idea, but it was considered a business, its own private company. So, I, I mean, I learned a lot of this talking to lawyers, but basically sharing money with a for-profit and a non-profit is bad on a legal and an accounting like, <laughs> domain. So basically what we decided to do was merge the entities, take the 10 grand we needed, put the down payment down, and make that, uh, you know, that happen. So that's why we switched. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty, like, I don't know, last minute Hail Mary kind of decision to make sure we yeah. had the resources to deliver. So. Yeah, we tried to juggle having two companies and who would be the leaders of both and who would you know, do design and development and the other, but you know, Neil, the month of August 2011 was like lawyer month, yeah. uh, where we were B Corp or we're L3C or this, and yeah. we eventually decided on the LLC. Um, but, th but in terms of like the Google checkout story, you know, after we interviewed all those people and we accepted, we ended up getting 35 people. We're like, all right, so we need to give you, or you need to give us, you know, money up front so we can pay for all the things that we promised on our website because <laughs> exactly nothing existed. Happened. Like if you look, if you go on, like we didn't have any pictures, yeah. we didn't have any, we had so, like illustrations of furniture. Yeah, we had a computer <laughs> illustration. We had like, oh, we're going to have comfy chairs, and we're going to have a couch. It's gonna we, be never, we never bought a couch. In the we never years. got a couch. Yeah. yeah, so that's one promise that we have broken. But, uh, we had no pictures of the space because we had no space, so we had to not only convince them that they could learn, but they had to trust us to give us their money, and then we couldn't use the money for two weeks, so we had like a week to buy, you know, get a space, pay for it, get buy computers. Buy all the stuff. Yeah, the, the computers arrived. I closed the, the lease three days before yeah, class started. The computers arrived two days before class started. And I, we, I didn't have the money to pay for all those computers. So I convinced Fred Lee, who's awesome, yeah. with Innova yeah. to sponsor those computers because yeah. I needed it. Because we had the money from the students, but it wasn't in our bank accounts because Google held it. Yeah. Fred Lee was our dad for a while. Yeah, like, he was, we were like dad. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for that. It was great. Thanks, thanks for it. <laughs>